Hi, I've got a rather unusual device here. It's an Elmo. Tickle me Elmo. Um, it's an Elmo visual presenter. It's a P30S model uh, visual presenter. And let's take a look at it. I didn't know these things uh, actually existed, but apparently they're uh, all the rage in the classrooms. And what they are is they're a, a mechanical, um, uh, they've got a mechanical uh, head here with a very high quality um, optic uh, camera on there. I think it's got like a times 10 zoom or something like that. And it looks very much like an overhead projector. And it's got two arms on it. So if we take a look, this arm comes down here to fold in place so that you can you know, carry the thing and transport the thing. But you lift this arm up here. The camera comes up. This, if you're wondering what it is, is a light. It's got uh, two LEDs in there, and uh, it's an LED light which lights up anything that you put on here. Usually they're for a page or something like that, and it's for presenting to like a classroom or an audience on a large screen. So it's got various uh, outputs, DVI output, uh, uh, S video output, and RGB output that you can hook on to a big projector type uh, system, and you can actually display things live. So if you're you know, going through a document or something, you put your document on here, and it presents it on the huge screen to the classroom. And it's got an LCD down the bottom here um, and an SD card on the side and you can put in presentations and all sorts of things which overlay on the video. Apparently, um, a little uh, three inch, uh, uh, three and a half inch maybe uh, LCD down here which shows you live what's on the screen. And apparently they're quite expensive but uh, you can pick them up, I think, uh, quite cheaply uh, second hand in various models. But I thought I'd uh, try and power this thing up and give it a go. And I thought maybe it'd be good for soldering. Look at the huge, uh, big usable range here. And if it does have a times 10 uh, zoom camera with a great optical ability, maybe it might be good for soldering or something like that. Or maybe I have to bring it down or something like that. I, I don't know. Anyway, um, I thought I'd power it up and give it a go. And here are the outputs we've got on the back of it. S-Video, Composite Video, DVI, RGB out. It's got RGB in as well, RS-232 control, 12-volt uh, DC power, and some dip switches, which I don't know what they do. But the problem we've got is this DC power connector. And if you have a look at that DC power jack, it's one of those really annoying uh, circular ones with the pin in the center. And I've seen those on various uh, notebooks and laptops and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I don't have anything that uh, fits that. So I think I'm going to open this thing up and uh, maybe see if I can um, hack in a different connector. So I've taken off various screws on the bottom and it should, and on the couple on the top here, and it should lift off. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's nothing holding it down. Ta-da! There we go. We're in. And here's the main PCB, and it contains lots of electronic-y uh, consumer goodness, I guess. There's a BGA device there, some memory, another huge big BGA device from someone called iChips. More memory beside that. Probably some uh, custom, well, some uh, video circuitry down here for the various uh, video out options. And uh, there seems to be quite a bit on that board. We've got our uh, SD cardboard over there and uh, we've got not much else down here we've got a little uh, keypad PCB there and the LCD screen now curious thing about the LCD screen is that uh, I don't see any data cable any parallel data cable go into it at all all we've got is this tiny little cable here and it runs into this connector down here so if you look at that there's a little shielded cable there plus two other tiny little wires into this tiny little uh, header connector here and well that must be like a composite um, output so I guess there's uh, you know there's power on there plus uh, composite and that's it so that uh, there must be a PCB under the LCD that uh, takes a composite input and converts it directly in, into the LCD I guess that kind of makes sense I'm just uh, I think that's a little bit curious, those little tiny, itty bitty, teeny weeny wires on there. Oh. And down in there, we can see the DC power jack, and that looks suspiciously like a standard footprint 
or very close to a standard footprint for a 2.5 millimeter um, standard DC jack. So maybe if I take the board out and have a look at that, I might, if I'm lucky, I might be able to uh, suck that out and replace it with a standard uh, 2.5 millimeter 12 volt DC jack. Only one way to find out, let's take the board out. Now I'm pretty sure I've got all the screws out, but I'm not having any luck prying this out at board. This board out at all, I seem to push on it and it springs back. It's almost as if it's stuck down with some sort of celastic or something like that. I find it's a real pain in the butt. I don't know what's what's going on here. Urgh. Hate this. And there you go. It actually required a little bit of uh, percussive maintenance to get that one out. And sure enough, it was uh, stuck down with these two pads here. How annoying. But there's some extra stuff on the bottom. This is actually a rather interesting board. And check out the bottom footprint of the DC jack there. And aha, it looks just like one of these standard DC jacks. This is a 5.5 uh, millimeter outside diameter, uh, 2.5 millimeter inside diameter. I should be able to suck that out and solder that back in. Maybe um, this pin on the back here might be a bit big, but uh, that's no problem at all. We can trim that down. So I should be able to replace that annoying DC jack with one that actually I can use. Beautiful. And we've sucked that connector out by chopping off, while it was on the board, chopping off one of the pins on the back there. Sorry, I forgot to hit uh, record. I didn't actually get it because um, it might be a bit difficult to heat up all three pins at once. So I did uh, chop off the one pin while it was on the top. Then I heated up these two pins here and it just dropped out. Then I was able to pull the third pin out and it's okay if you don't want to uh, keep the existing sorry if you don't want to keep the existing connector and you don't care about that then you can actually uh, destroy them and uh, ensure you don't damage the board going out so unfortunately as I predicted the back pin there was a little bit too wide so I've had to uh, chop chop some of that off actually it turns out I've had to trim all three pins they didn't quite uh, fit there, but ta-da, there we go. Finally got it to fit, and we now have a beautiful standard DC jack that I should have a power adapter for. And of course, you've got to make sure the polarity is correct. In this case, the uh, center pin goes down to the third one there through a poly switch. It goes down to the um, what's clearly the uh, positive input with the poly switch down there. And the other two are connected down through ground, as they should be. So uh, that should work fine. Now, I know you're curious to know which devices are on the board, but uh, unfortunately, uh, finding info on these is uh, very few and far between. Uh, we've got this uh, BGA device here, which is a Nucor uh, SIP1280 DV. And uh, obviously, that's um, because that's hooked on directly to the camera here, that's some sort of uh, video capture uh, chipset. And there's the memory surrounding it. Possibly this one might be tied over to here, I don't know. But uh, certainly uh, that is like a memory for that and maybe a uh, ROM as well. And over here we have an iChips uh, IP00C726. Now I found uh, the company website and I found info on a 762 device, which is a high-end video display HD processor. Um, and they make deinterlaced chips and all sorts of things, but I can't find any info on the 726. Um, but I found info on the 762. It's definitely 726 there. Go figure. Once again, we've got some memory, we've got some ROM here. It's obviously uh, got a uh, code on there to indicate um, that that device has been, that flash device has been programmed. And uh, over here we've got a lattice uh, semiconductor CPLD. Once again, it's been uh, silk screened uh, on the uh, top to indicate that, uh, or stamped on the top to indicate that it's been programmed with whatever. That's just some sort of glue logic or something like that. 
And down here, the uh, trying to read the device on here is incredibly difficult, but I've got NEC something or other, and I think it's in some sort of NEC uh, processor or something like that. And once again, that's been marked on the top, possibly to indicate that it's been programmed because it's a programmable uh, device, no doubt, like a microprocessor and slash micro controller. And um, up here, we have a device from uh, Focus. It's an FS. 401 LF. Once again, can't find any info on that at all. It's just, uh, you know, these are, well, you know, obviously uh, got something to do with, you know, display uh, drivers and things like that. And on, on the bottom here, and here we have an analog device's uh, ADV 7123. That's a high speed uh, video triple DAC. No surprises there, 10 bit uh, video DAC. And this device here is a TI uh, TFP. 410 and it's a uh, panel bus display driver I see and uh, we've got um, some LVDS uh, driver devices that's an LVDS uh, driver up there that's a uh, THC 63 um, LVDF and that's a dead giveaway that's an LVDS uh, driver so apart from that uh, this board is uh, rather you know it would be interesting if we could actually get the specific uh, data sheets for these devices, but anyway, it is really, you know, essentially a uh, reasonably high-end um, HD video uh, capture, because here's our video input video input connector here coming from the camera. It's the multi-way connector. It's got the big shielded cable running up to the uh, camera on the top arm. So that's obviously some sort of video capture and it buffers it, does all sorts of things. We've got a big video display processor with some memory, maybe a micro uh, doing some stuff here. We've got, and then uh, various uh, drivers to, uh, drive the various displays and things like that. So yeah, it's um, pretty much what you'd expect, but uh, I hate it when you can't find info on devices. It's really annoying. All right, I found a plug pack. It says it requires uh, 12 volts at 1.9 amps. I've only got uh, 1.25 amps here. Eh, fingers crossed, let's give it a try. What's the worst that can happen? It hiccups or it just doesn't work. Here we go. Woohoo! Hey, we have light, we have flashing, the LCD is doing Elmo! Beautiful! It works! Hey, there's my hand on the LCD! Brilliant! And there you go, you can see my hand on the LCD in... Is it real time? Oh, no, there's a bit of lag there, I think. I think there is a little bit of lag in that. That's a bit of a... bit of a bummer, but uh, yeah! It seems to work. I wonder how this thing works. Maybe I should read the manual. Well, let's see if we can uh, zoom in on a board here. It's got the zoom control up on the top head of the, and you can hear it if you listen closely. Hang on, listen to this. So we can zoom in a long way on these devices. Looks like it's going digital now. That zoom and that's a like I'm trying to there they should be surface mount components but I can't make heads or tails out of that so obviously the focus system isn't working that great at those massive zooms I mean it's supposed to have auto focus this thing um, hang on no no let me zoom in oh pushed a button oh there we go there we go you gotta push the button. So you zoom in. That's as far it looks like. That's as far as it will go. But gee, I tell you what, that's not. There we go. It takes a little bit of settling down, but I tell you what, that's not too shabby, I guess. Um, considering that this thing's what a good uh, 50 centimeters away. The um, actual camera itself is about 50 centimeters away from the board, that's a, that's a long distance. So that's not, that's not too bad at all. If we zoom out on that, maybe it will keep focus as we zoom out, but yeah, it's rather interesting. I don't, I don't mind that at all. I wonder if we can uh, get closer and um, maybe even get a soldering iron under this thing. And here it is connected to my 22 inch PC monitor. And it does look, really, really good 
when it's uh, displayed on a large screen like this. Much better than the piss poor resolution uh, three and a half inch uh, screen on the unit itself. And it does seem to work really well. And if I uh, zoom in here and oh, zoom in, let's zoom in on the board. You need to press the autofocus button once it's zoomed in. If I press it, there we go. It, it hunts around a bit, but uh, it does zoom in rather nicely. And after that, I think that might be a digital zoom after that. So, but it, it really is quite nice considering the, the distance. That's a, oh, that's probably an 0603 uh, component there on the screen, but that is really quite nice. I'm very, very impressed with this thing, given the... Uh, half a meter distance that it's away from and uh, it does work really quite nicely and if I give that a little poke under there that is in real time unlike the I thought there was lag on the LCD before but there's not that's ah oh, if there is lag it's very difficult to uh, to see it so I'm you could really use this thing as a uh, quite a nice uh, real-time soldering aid I think and there it is zoomed into its absolute best and uh, you can see as I pull the light over it you can you can really see the uh, the compression artifacts on there it's not that great but uh, it's certainly good enough for uh, soldering work even at this distance I mean you know, it's not as good as a nice uh, stereo microscope, perhaps, but, uh, well, certainly it's not as good as that, but, geez, it's not bad at all. And I really like the display produced when I move the head down like that. It really is, really is quite nice. Um, I don't think it's going to autofocus properly at these particular angles or not, but, oh, yeah, there it goes. Yeah, it did. That's it really is quite neat. You can have a, quite a bit of fun with this. I like it. Imagine if it was on a big uh, proper, um, you know, movable boom arm. That would be rather neat. Now let's see what happens if I halve the distance here. I've really bent it down and uh, put it in place like that. Obviously, it's off the uh, platform, you know. It's sort of, it's just on the platform. But uh, let's see if we can... Zoom in on that. No, hang on. No, it's not going to let us zoom in on... It's not going to let us zoom in on that at all at that sort of distance. So unfortunately, there is a limit to how close you can get this head and these optics to your board. So that's probably a bit too... Distance is a bit close for that sort of... That's about the limit not sure what zoom level that is but uh, yeah it's not it's not huge so you can't obviously get uh, clo too close with this thing the optics are um, optimized for that sort of uh, half distance uh, half um, half meter working distance with the times 10 zoom and I just tried it with an SD card and it does save uh, HD images or uh, semi HD 1280 by 720 very uh, nice saves them as JPEGs but unfortunately it doesn't seem to uh, uh, have any video recording uh, capability to uh, SD card so that's a tad disappointing uh, not too happy with that I was actually wrong on the optical zoom on this thing it is actually a 16 time optical zoom with a four times uh, digital but it's a shame it just can't get uh, closer like that but it does allow you um, part of the feature of this it does allow you to get 3d views of objects so you can tilt this thing all the way over well yeah this slicer this angle of it anyway it doesn't allow you to go this direction but you could rotate your objects like that and uh, you could zoom in and uh, get video now I've um, tried the SD card in here and you can actually save uh, HD images and well HD being a thousand um, being 1280 by uh, 720 um, you know sort of the low end HD but it's got uh, the camera is 30 frames per second updating so it really is you know quite a powerful little beastie but unfortunately um, it saves really good quality uh, images now unfortunately there doesn't seem to be any 
video recording capability with this. So if I wanted to do that, I'd have to plug video, um, there's some sort of uh, video recorder into my uh, RGB or uh, S video output, one of those um, sampling uh, capture video capture uh, cards or dongles for your uh, PC. Uh, so that's a bit unfortunate, but And because I know there will be people who are curious to see what's inside the video head here and uh, I won't take it apart any further than that because the it's basically um, just contains an optical uh, lens system in there which is the 16 time optical zoom there'll be a motor in there to drive the optical zoom there's a PCB up on top there and uh, another PCB down here for the autofocus and the uh, um, zoom control as well and uh, that's about it so yeah sorry I'm not going to delve into the inner details of this I want to keep it in uh, one piece until I decide what to do with it now the main board had these and these are these little um, they call them uh, test points but they're actually uh, grounding clips and they're spring-loaded ground in clips and if you lift that board up there's a little spring mechanism in there that sort of lifts a lever up like that it's rather quite nice I haven't uh, seen anything like that before it's rather uh, complex just for the uh, operation of uh, grounding something through to a back panel and they've got like uh, four of those on this board it's crazy and you can see the cable down in there at the bottom that huge uh, multi-way shielded cable which goes all the way down the arm back to the main processor board and they've got uh, some ribbon cables and other stuff in there you can probably just see the motor down in there which has that flat flex cable that's probably the zoom motor perhaps and uh, the bottom side of the presumably uh, custom PCB this would be a whole custom assembly specifically designed for uh, by or for uh, Elmo I'm sure I'm not I doubt they've used just used an off-the-shelf uh, webcam type thing and just adapted some optics to it I think it would actually be custom manufactured I don't know it's it's just rather neat I like it there's got to be a real good use for this it's a shame that um, the uh, the working distance on this thing needs to be uh, rather large because it's got that 16 time optical zoom in there so i don't know maybe you can put a secondary objective uh lens on there to uh halve that perhaps i don't know i like i actually halve the working distance or something like that but yeah it's i don't know if you can figure out what i can do with this thing maybe a way to hack it and uh you know rip off the camera put it on a movable arm and rip out the processor board and embed it on the back of a screen or something and i don't know i reckon it's got to be usable for something neat perhaps uh, PCB soldering because the update rate is uh, near instant so it works really quite well I like it hmm I don't know if you get it got any good ideas for it let me know and uh, if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you like uh, tear down Tuesday it's not quite a uh, it's a bit more than a uh, tear down it's sort of a you know investigation into perhaps what this thing is capable of Tickle me Elmo! Catch you next time.